Welcome to the entrepreneurial revolution. At the turn of the 21st century, the world economy shifted from what was known as the information age, which was launched by the digital computer, by men such as Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, to what has been now not coined the entrepreneurial age. Where never before in history has business been able to serve quality products and services and scale them simultaneously. Now, with this fast-moving global economy, businesses have actually come up with an idea and strategies to deal with this. However, how is a generation that have inherited this age surviving it? As a university professor in entrepreneurship and a member of Generation X, I have seen this launch of technology over the years. At the same time, I've seen this generation of the millennials and the successor iGens struggling to survive in the world that we've created. I actually often sit outside the classroom with my students, speaking about the path of entrepreneurship and innovation. But the subject matter often shifts from academic requirements to their level of stress, anxiety, and depression. So to better understand their challenges, let's look at their mindset. Let's look at how they view life and their daily struggles. The millennials and iGens are digital natives and will define themselves as global citizens. They are environmentally conscious and believe in social justices. They actually live quite often in virtual environments, such as games and social media, and spend less and less time in real-world communities. However, they're also, they seek authenticity. They are assertive, and they believe that anything is possible despite real-world and personal challenges. And unlike Generation X, my generation, that we believed in work-life balance, they believe in work-life integration, where there are more synergies between how they define their life. Work, home, family, community, personal well-being, and health. And it's this definition that entrepreneurs that they're attracted to. In fact, innovation and entrepreneurship has, has been one of the fastest growing academic fields over the last two decades. In fact, data has shown that 20% of freshmen actually show an interest in being an entrepreneur. So let's define entrepreneurship. There are numerous definitions. This is the one that I, that I use. The process of creating value to leveraging resources to exploit an opportunity. So let me break that down for you. The key terms here is creating value, which is the foundation to any product or service. Leveraging resources, because, this is the, this, because we only have a limited number of resources available to us, which includes time, money, energy, etc. And of course, finally, to exploit an opportunity, which means that we are continually seeking ideas to solve a problem or to add more value. Now, my students gravitate to this definition because they've been taught from a young age that they can change the world. And of course, that's what the what entrepreneurs and startups want to do. However, they also understand, and entrepreneurs understand, that the world that we, they live in is, has high turbulent markets and involves a high-risk environment. And where there's risk, there's not always rewards, but in fact, failure. And failure for an entrepreneur is actually so common that it's considered part of the process. We are taught to fail fast and fail forward. We are basically, we use failure by actually managing risk by setting up actually what they call validation exercises, which promotes market feedback and ultimately market adoption. Failure becomes tuition. We, and basically, when we do fail, we, we do what is known as a pivot. So we teach our entrepreneurs, our, our, even our future entrepreneurs, how to deal with failure. But how are we, how are we teaching the generation that have inherited this age to deal with failure. Unfortunately, the national statistics regards to mental health trends is unprecedented. A recent study by the Center of Collegiate Mental Health has shown that 54% of students seek counseling for some mental health issue. 34% are actually on some form of medication for a diagnostic med mental health concern. And incredibly, 36% have seriously considered suicide. 
Now, this graph by the American College of Health Association shows a very high percentage of tertiary students in the US who basically felt overwhelmed anxiety or felt so depressed that it was difficult to function. And then this reflects conversations that I have with my students. In fact, recently, a, a conversation I had with two female students from very different backgrounds and different parenting told me that failing, and actually even more importantly, the fear of failure, failing, is the number one cause of stress and anxiety and depression. And by the way, they're both on medication. I think we need a new approach to helping our students and this generation deal with the concept of failure. And I believe the business models we use in startups can help, help that. So let's look at a basic business model we use in startups. This actually is a model we use also for any, tom any form of innovation. First, we ideate. Basically, what that means is simply come up with a new idea for a business, for a product or a service. Now, of course, your business must add value. From then, we actually build. We actually use the resources we have to build a, what is called a prototype. And the purpose of building a prototype of your, purpose, of your product or your service is to get feedback, is to actually introduce it into the target market for feedback. When we receive that feedback, we measure and evaluate how successful that particular prototype has been. And we ultimately discover and learn from that feedback and re-ideate in the future. It is this measure and validation stage where basically we determine whether success or failure has actually occurred. And by learning, we, re re we possibly could do something known as a pivot and we ideate differently. Now, this circular model continues because the markets we are living in also continue to change. So if, if, we, if any business produces an action that possibly can become some sort of failure, and failure is, and even the fear of failure is one of the number one causes of depression and anxiety, how about we try to reframe the F word and discover maybe that the entrepreneurial mindset is in fact more than a mindset. Now before I go there, I quite often take the definition of entrepreneurship and translate that into a lifestyle mindset. So imagine you're, working, you're walking towards a closed door. I see an opportunity to add value. So as you get closer to the, I use my muscles, my resources, to exploit that opportunity as you get closer to that door to open it. Hence, adding value. I may even smile and give me even more value. So if we take this definition of entrepreneurship and we take the model that we use in startups, let's translate that from the shaping of a business to a shaping of a generation. So where we started with ideation, let's start with the entrepreneurial mindset. As per my previous example, it's all about adding value. Now where we build in businesses, in, in human, act, human functioning, we act. We initiate some form of behavior. Now, for millennials and iGens, this could po this is possibly be a social media post or maybe applying for a new job or for college. Now, of course, whenever we, we set off a certain behavior, some sort of feedback is going to occur. Okay? So maybe it's a like, maybe it's a written comment or a response to our application. Now, of course, the feedback can also be positive or possible rejection. In the business model, we, this is where we measure and validate where data analytics come into play. In social psychology, this is where we are, we're told to embrace. You bond and respond to the feedback and determine the outcome and the corresponding feelings. It is during this embrace stage you actually come up with the truth of that particular feedback. And through the validation process, you actually determine its worth. Now, if it's positive, then quite often we would decide to repeat that behavior in the future. If it's negative or some sort of failure has occurred, it's important to actually identify the truth and determine the merit behind that behavior. Now, as in cognitive behavioral therapy, we are told that not every negative feedback, no, sorry, not every feelings we experience due to negative feedback that can be distorted. So it's important to reevaluate 
those feelings and determine the truth behind them. Because not all feedback we get personally reflects who we are as a person. And not, all, and not all feelings we experience can be trusted. In the business model, this is where we learn. In the entrepreneurial mindset model, this is where our identity is discovered and defined. It's by embracing this, this feedback and possibly failure and learning and discovering more about ourselves can we strengthen and become, have a healthier identity. Now, identity then, of course, is shaped and influences our entrepreneurial mindset and we continue with the cycle. So as we engage ourselves in the world around us, the cycle continues. These simple steps allows us to identify personal growth and obviously a healthier identity. And it's important as in business that that we learn from failure. By not, not allowing failure to negatively affect our identity, we can embrace failure discover more about ourselves, and become a stronger person. Failure becomes tuition. By teaching the entrepreneurial mindset and the the strategies to cope with failure, I believe can help this generation, in fact, all of us, to avoid the negative effects of stress, anxiety, and depression, and give us the tools to engage in this incredible time of human history. My prayer for my students, and actually for all of us, is that we embrace an entrepreneurial mindset that our, so that our identity is not shaped or influenced by, by Facebook likes for the true impact we can make on others. And that positive, I mean, and that failure or negative feedback gives us an opportunity to discover more about ourselves and, the imp- and truly how powerful we really are. We live in an incredible time of entrepreneurial opportunities. Let's give this generation, and in fact, let's give all of us, the mind and mindset to not only survive, but to thrive. Thank you, and God bless.